Good morning and welcome to the DMJ Seeds 2021 Winter Agronomy Update number two. I have a lot of things to cover today, so we'll dive right into it. Uh, first thing I want to thank Ryan Underwood, our, our local pioneer agronomist, for helping me out with a few of the slides and, and helping me put together some information to present to you guys today. Uh, so, so 2020 uh, corn rootworm observations is, is what we're going to look at as well as management uh, factors for 2021. And we'll talk a little bit about chrome corn hybrids. Uh, so 2020 was the highest corn rootworm pressure we've seen in this area since 2012, which is kind of the high watermark for uh, rootworm feeding. While I have this, this image up, this is a really great illustration of the two main uh, rootworm beetles that affect our area. Uh, this one right here with the black stripes and yellow body is the western. So the western only only lays its eggs in corn and hatches in corn. It, it lays its eggs and hatches every year. It lays a larger number of eggs than the northern, shallower in the soil profile, so it's not as, as winter hardy and can have survivability issues in harsh winters. Um, it can be controlled with a rotation, a one-year rotation away from corn. Uh, the northern is more winter hardy. It lays fewer eggs, lower in the soil profile. Um, it does affect corn on corn, obviously, but it does have the ability to have extended diapause. So um, skipping a year of hatching uh, or, or the eggs will be laid, not hatched the following year, and then hatch a year later. So a uh, little different uh, different management tactic for that for that specific rootworm beetle, but um, they're both uh, prevalent in this area. So we look at 2020, summer of 2020. This is a field of corn on corn, uh, 0421 chrome on the left, which is fully traded versus 0075 in the AM version. So uh, with no below ground protection. And you're starting to see some pockets and some areas of root lodging caused from root feeding um, from that rootworm beetle or that rootworm larvae. And what's gonna happen now once that, that root lodging takes place and those roots are, tr are pruned back uh, that corn plant s loses its ability to uptake nitrogen and different nutrients and water, and just it, it's not going to reach its full yield potential. Um, there's even some cases where you know we had a little bit of wind in this case that that made it easy to see or really expressed it. Or some cases where if we don't have that wind event, the roots will still be trimmed back, and you'll just have a lower yield without knowing you have rootworm damage. But um, and this will likely cause some harvest ability issues. Sometimes they it feeds in fine, but sometimes it can be uh, pretty challenging. Um, another field uh, of uh, 0075 AM, um, this time with 0688 Chrome. This is up by Fairfax, Minnesota. So this is eight years of corn on corn, which I would consider long-term corn on corn. And it looks like they had Capture LFR, which is a bifenthrin product in furrow for an insecticide. And bifenthrin products really in high pressure situations aren't adequate for um, rootworm control. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you another example of that in a little bit. But uh, really in this application where it's been this long corn on corn, it's, it's not going to be adequate protection. You can see fairly large pockets starting uh, to form in this double product. So this is a great, great example of extended diapause. Um, actually, this is back from 1999, 2000, 2001. So um, what you can see here is this middle section had a soybeans, soybeans, corn rotation, and basically zero root lodging in that area. Uh, where this top portion and bottom portion, um, you have significant root lodging. So in 2001, uh, which was current when this photo was taken, the field was corn. In 2000, it was soybeans. In 1999, it was corn. So what happened was uh, the northern corn rootworm uh, laid its eggs in 1999. They did not hatch in 2000 
and then they hatched and fed and emerged in 2001. So insecticide control for corn rootworm. Um, this is from the University of Minnesota, Southwest Minnesota IPM research, um, 2020, put together by Bruce Potter and, and Travis Vollmer. And you can see this top part, this is the, the no insecticide check of 141.7 bushel. And we go down to capture LFR uh, is 143.4 bushel. So capture, capture or any type of generic bifenthrin product in furrow, um, in my opinion, and in this study's case and different studies I've seen is not adequate rootworm control. Um, it, I'm not telling you to, to stop using capture or, or any type of bifenthrin product because it is effective at other, other pests and can increase yield and, and, and increase stands. Um, but as far as for rootworm control, it's just, it's, it's not um, the right product uh, for that application. I know in, in some circles uh, and in, in some, you know, online places where people talk, it's, you know, corn rootworm, you can get generic bifenthrin and a dose of try and put it on for $2 an acre. Uh, yes, you'd be putting on an insecticide, but it would not be adequate for corn rootworm control. Um, the only insecticide type products that I think are um, effective against rootworm are granular in furrow products uh, like this this Aztec HC which you can see has a 174.9 bushel uh, yield level versus uh, the 141.7 check so so I went ahead and, and did some math on granular insecticide versus buying a chrome fully traded product. Uh, my thought process was a, uh, an instance where we had a double with insecticide. How did that compare dollars wise versus just buying a chrome product? So I used Aztec HC, which I would consider um, a, a product that would be adequate control for rootworms under most circumstances. The use rate's 1.63 pounds per acre. Estimated cost is $15.25 a pound. Uh, that's kind of an average retail price. I know there's probably places out there you can buy it for $2 cheaper or $2 more, but I figured that was a, a good average price. So your cost per acre uh, to treat that double for with, with Aztec HC for fruitworm control is $24.85 an acre. I uh, actually multiplied that by 2.2 just to see what the value would be to treat a bag of seed corn roughly and it'd be about $54.67 per bag. Um, then I took, looked at Chrome. Basically, if you take the same genetics, so the same, same hybrid, just an AM versus a Chrome, uh, price difference was anywhere between $36 and $46 a bag um, per acre. You're looking at about $16.36 to $20.90 an acre. Um, so according to this math and the numbers I had, the chrome actually uh, economically comes out a little bit cheaper. Uh, it's also much easier to use. You don't have to have any special equipment. You don't have to handle insecticide. Um, you know, it, it, it just, it makes things a lot, uh, lot simpler, but there are cases where uh, people will still need to use Aztec or, or a granular, similar granular product. So crop rotations at risk. Corn and soybean rotations where, where you've been using full traits, uh, risk is very low. 50-50 corn and soybean rotations if you've been running just AMs, conventionals, or straight roundup corn for six to eight years. Uh, we're going to start to see some moderate risk on those fields. And especially in cases where you have, you know, if, you, if a, a certain field has a history of later hybrids or later silking hybrids. So what can happen is uh, if you have a field that's, that's got, that's a later number and it silks later um, in, in, the, in the field surrounding in our earlier hybrids, sometimes you'll get some migration of beetles into that later, later hybrid just because the silks are, are fresher that they like to feed on. And you can kind of create a trap crop situation. 
Um, operations that are two third corn, one third soybeans. So if your first year corn on corn or first year corn, excuse me, is is an AM, uh, your second year corn on corn is a traded Chrome version, for example, and then you follow with soybeans, your risk level is pretty low um, because you have one year susceptible crop and then two years a non-susceptible. Any, any corn fields that are five plus years corn on corn, uh, especially 10 plus years corn on corn, and you have the ability to rotate to soybeans, I would strongly consider that. Um, basically sight unseen just with the, the beetle counts and, and the, the levels we've been seeing the last couple of years. Uh, if you have, for whatever reason, no no way of rotating uh, to soybeans, I would I would strongly consider running a, a full rate of a granular insecticide like Aztec or Force uh, in furrow. Um, you can control some of the adult beetles with foliar insecticide, um, but it's a little bit tricky. You know, the timing has to be correct. I know a lot of guys put insecticide in with their fungicide application, um, which isn't a bad practice, but don't assume that you're controlling adult uh, corn rootworm beetles because sometimes they emerge at different times than your uh, foliar uh, fungicide application is occurring. I'm just going to talk really quickly about Chrome. So Chrome is, is replacing all of our AMXT products. Uh, and eventually will be all, all of our fully traded corn products will be Chrome. Uh, so what Chrome does is it is it gives us similar, similar efficacy as the AMXT in, it, in how it controls insects, but it's a molecular stack of Herculex-1 and Herculex-RW. So this allows Pioneer to fully trait more of their genetics or more of their germplasm. So it gives us a more reliable stream of high yielding solid agronomic products that are available that have built-in rootworm protection. So I, I had this, this slide put together. So this is all the Chrome products for 2021 between 94 and 113 day that are Chrome uh, products. So fully traded uh, and have built-in rootworm protection. If we would go back and if, if we wouldn't have the ability to use Chrome um, most likely out of this group, you would only see four or maybe five of these products that are, that are available uh, fully traded. So it really unlocks a lot of genetics and allows for a lot more diversity uh, for those corn on corn or higher rootworm problem fields. Any questions, concerns, ideas for the future topics, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, like I said, this is a really broad topic, and I, I couldn't cover it all today, and I know um, that I can't uh, discuss every situation. So if anyone has any specific fields or, or, or issues they'd like to discuss with me and, and come up with a good rootworm management plan, uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you.